Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. Today I wanted to talk about autopilot because there's still so much confusion with what autopilot is. And not just with the general public, even uh, news publications, they still refer to autopilot as a self-driving car, which really is not true. Uh, the current autopilot, whether you're talking about the original autopilot or even autopilot 2.0, uh, they're really just a driver assist tool. Uh, they're not self-driving. It's really best to think of it as the next evolution of cruise control. You know, cruise control for the longest time was really dumb. You'd turn it on to 70 miles an hour and if there was a car going 60 miles an hour in front of you, you'd plow right into the back of it if you didn't take control and take it out of cruise control. And then probably about, you know, 15 years ago or so, cars started coming out with uh, adaptive cruise control or these other smart cruise controls which could actually see the cars on the road and slow down to match their speed, and then when they'd get out of the way, it would speed back up. Autopilot is basically the next step uh, beyond that. Not only is it adjusting the speed, it's also steering for you, so you don't have to focus so much on staying right in between the lines. This video is just focusing on the first generation of Autopilot and Autopilot 2, kind of where it currently stands or where it's gonna be probably in the next six months or so. Uh, over time, Tesla, is constantly doing software updates and adding new features to Autopilot. The original Autopilot and even the new Autopilot in its current form are really only designed for interstate driving. Uh, you can use them on a city streets, but you're gonna be limited to just five miles an hour over the posted speed limit. And Tesla does that because the software is really not designed for those environments. Autopilot currently does not um, stop for red lights, stop signs, anything like that. And so it, the software is really just geared towards interstate and that's why Tesla puts that five mile an hour restriction on city streets or anything that's not a divided highway. One other neat little feature of autopilot is the auto lane change. Now it doesn't mean that if you get behind a slow car, uh, the car autopilot will automatically go around it. Uh, eventually with the autopilot uh, two, the new autopilot, it's supposed to do that. Uh, with Autopilot 1, I don't think it's ever going to do that because it doesn't have the side cameras and the long-range sensors. But what it will do, uh, all versions of Autopilot, if you hold down your blinker, it'll kind of check to see, make sure there's not a car next to you, and also that it's not a solid line, that's a dotted line, uh, but then the car will change lanes for you. Now, it, it's not foolproof, so don't just you know put your blinker on and you know not even check to see if there's a car there. Uh, there have been times where I've gone to do that and I put my blinker on and autopilot starts to get over and I realize, crap, <laughs> there's actually a car right next to me. And so I have to you know, disengage and pull the wheel back. One great way to check to make sure there's not a car uh, in your blind spot is to check your uh, backup camera. Uh, I love that backup camera. <laughs> I leave it up all the time. It's such a wide angle that you can actually see if there's a car next to you in the backup camera. So it, it's pretty great. And if you adjust your side mirrors using the click and clack method, which I'll put a link to that in the description down below, uh, they ha give a really good description of how to adjust your side mirrors to eliminate any blind spots. So if you do that, plus using the backup camera, you're not gonna have any blind spots at all. The biggest tip that I could give anybody about using autopilot is basically just drive like normal. When I'm using autopilot, I still keep my hands on the wheel and I move my hands just like I would if I was driving without autopilot. I still turn the wheel and everything. I really think that's the way that the first generation of autopilot is intended to be used, and even the second generation in its current form uh, should be used. I, I don't think it's, you really should keep your hands off the wheel at all. I think you should keep your hands on the wheel and just drive like normal. Now, a lot of you might say, well, why do you bother even using autopilot if you're still gonna drive the car? Well, there's still a lot of advantages of using autopilot. Uh, the first is that it's a lot less tiring. When you're driving, normally you have to be focusing on so many different things, you know, staying between the lines, everything that's going on around you, and your speed, all that stuff. But when you're using autopilot, you don't have to worry about your speed, uh, you don't have to worry about staying in the lines, unless you're on like a pretty curvy road, but on a relatively straight road or light curves with decent lane lines, Autopilot's gonna keep it in, in the line. Uh, you obviously still wanna pay attention to that, but you don't have to focus on st steering and maintaining the center of the lane. It's so much less tiring 
because you're able to just kind of focus on the big picture, you know, kind of watching the cars around you, seeing who's driving like a jackass that you want to avoid and stuff like that. But it, it's things like that, that you're able to kind of observe a little bit better when you're not focusing so much on the lane lines, you're able to kind of see the bigger picture. And by doing that, you don't get nearly as tired. It also just makes driving a lot more enjoyable. Like I, you can, when you're going through a scenic area, you can actually kind of look around a little bit at the scenery. You obviously want to maintain your eyes on the road, but you can kind of look off to the side and in the Model X, you can look up a little bit if uh, you know, you're driving through Glenwood Canyon or somewhere that's you know, really breathtaking, you can look up and out of your uh, panoramic windshield. So uh, it definitely makes driving more enjoyable too. And the other thing I never really considered uh, but have slowly kind of realized over time, autopilot really reduces road rage. <laughs> not, not that I, you know, have much road rage, but you don't really worry about that stuff anymore because, you know, autopilot's doing so much of the regular driving. You know, if you get behind somebody that's going a little slower, it doesn't really matter. You're not really racing to get to your destination anymore. And so I feel like driving is a lot less stressful. And I think if everyone had autopilot, there would be significantly less road rage because you just kind of, you're enjoying the journey a little bit more. And I've noticed that when there's multiple ways to get to a destination now, I much rather would drive a longer trip along the interstate where I can use autopilot you know, the whole way or the majority of the way versus taking a shortcut where I can't really use autopilot reliably just because driving is so much better with autopilot. So it, it's just those little things that over time you really kind of realize like, wow, autopilot, it's a game changer. You know, it, it's not even, you know, a self-driving car, like I said, uh, eventually Tesla's going to have that, but currently autopilot is not self-driving. Later this summer, I'm actually going to be moving cross country and I'll be driving my Tesla uh, the whole way. So I'm going to have a real firsthand experience of an extremely long, I think it's like 1800 miles or something, uh, road trip in the Tesla. So uh, I'll definitely do at least a, one video on it, maybe even a couple, depending on how much information I, I feel like there is to, to give out. It'll be the ultimate test for me, at least, of long distance driving with autopilot. Uh, I'll be supercharging, uh, driving long hours, long days. So it's it's going to be a, an adventure. Um, so definitely don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way you see that video when it comes out later this summer. So do you guys view autopilot the same way as I do, or do you guys view it differently? Uh, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And also, did I forget any tips? Uh, do you guys have other tips for using autopilot that I forgot or other, you know, benefits of using autopilot that I forgot to mention? If so, let me know in the comments down below. I definitely looking forward to hearing from you. <laughs> well, I hope this video kind of helped people uh, realize the limitations of autopilot and kind of how I at least feel it should be used and so that everyone's safer because Really, the last thing we want is anyone to get into an accident with autopilot or, or an accident period. Uh, Teslas, they are you know the safest cars on the road, but you don't really want to test that. <laughs> you know, they're also very expensive, so you don't want to get into an accident with a Tesla. That's for sure, or an accident period, but uh, definitely in a Tesla. Uh, that's you know I mentioned the road rage earlier. That's the only time now that I tend to get a little amped up when I'm driving is when I feel like somebody's about to hit me because I'm like, oh my God, I'm driving <laughs> my Tesla, like, stay away. You're like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, so that's, I don't really consider that road rage. That's more of uh, panic. <laughs> if you had been on the fence about buying a Tesla and my videos kind of encouraged you to uh, finally pull the trigger on it, then feel free to use my referral link. You can save $1,000 off the price plus uh, you will get unlimited supercharging for as long as you own the Tesla. Uh, I'll give, uh, put that link in the description down below. Uh, if you're getting an inventory car, uh, you can give my referral code to your delivery specialist and they should be able to hook you up. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like the video and also uh, you can check out uh, another one of my videos right up here. Or if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, be sure to subscribe. You can click right there. 
That way you see all my upcoming videos, especially one about my road trip across country. Uh, you probably want to see that. It'll be interesting. Everybody I talk to that asks me, oh, well, how are you getting your Tesla there? Uh, they're kind of shocked when I tell them I'm driving it. So uh, I think the road trip video it should open some eyes for some people that kind of didn't realize that you can actually drive a Tesla across country um, with relative ease. At least, <laughs> I hope with relative ease. <laughs>